Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, Contributing Editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. Well, if you've been churning out design for a living, thinking about its cost, manufacturing, logistics, and structural integrity all the time, you risk forgetting the very essence of design. Playing with shapes, exploring ideas, no matter how impractical or unorthodox they might seem. Perhaps as someone who is going to be held accountable for the success or the failure, I mean the commercial success and failure of one's own design, you no longer have that luxury. So I'd like to remind you of what it feels like to have that by sharing with you a series of designs by students. These are the works of three students from the class of John DeVitri, a professor who teaches solid edge classes at Utah State University. Let's meet the first of the trio, Elizabeth. Before I came to Utah State, I didn't even know that these programs existed. I'm majoring in mechanical engineering, so this class is required. I just really like the idea of mechanical engineering. So I asked Elizabeth if she has any specific method she uses to come up with her design. And I just worked with the design and the program until I stumbled on something I liked. One of her designs, called Coxscrew, features three rings held together by a complicated series of knots. I asked her to explain how she managed to do that. Right. Um, so I created um, five different planes. Two of the planes were at the edges of the loop, one in the center, and then two between the center and the loop. I drew circles of different sizes on each of those and lofted them together. Most of the time when we are building something in a CAD program, we are thinking about creating objects that will solve electromechanical problems and address electromechanical issues. But Elizabeth reminds us that there is something else that is important that we need to pay attention to. Well, art is a big part of engineering. I mean, if something doesn't have aesthetic appeal, no one's going to want to use it or buy it. So. When I started learning about this program, I thought not only is it practical, but it could be a really cool medium of art. We may be seeing Elizabeth's design sooner than you think, because when I asked Elizabeth about post-graduation aspirations, this is what she said. I haven't given a lot of thought to it yet, but I'm definitely going to pursue a career in mechanical engineering. Next one is Alan. So I was in art for a bit, and then... I had gone into uh, computer-aided drafting for a bit, and I had started with solid works, but then I went into engineering up at USU. So this is really my first class that I did solid edge. Alan designed something that initially he simply titled an interesting idea. Later, he rebranded it as the octopus. I asked him to explain the idea. To me, more or less uh, a piece of jewelry. It, it was a just a, a doodle, if you will. Uh, I just played around with the program trying to just uh, do different designs, see if this looks good, if that looks good, could I pattern this way, what can I do with the sweep, just have fun with the program. About where his inspiration comes from, or where we might seek inspirations for our own engineering and design works, Alan has this advice. Go to an art museum. A modern art museum, any kind of art museum, just go into an impressionistic part of it. I'm not saying go and see some of the sma the little splatter art or the <laughs> the most modernistic one I've ever seen. Go in and just try and feel the creativity. Doodle, you know. Take some time out of your day and just doodle on a piece of paper. Yes, you can make the this assembly or this faucet work a certain way and it'll run this way. Then you can take the outside of that and you can maybe just get it this sort of sculpture look. Like it's, it's not just my faucet, it's a piece of modern art. And Alan's definition about who or what an engineer is may be much broader than you and I have traditionally thought of it. I, I think the best type of engineers aren't engineers at all. They're the people that have the normal life, they, they see something's wrong. And then they take something from their life experience and they figure out a way to make it work better. It's the normal people that come up with the random ideas. Engineers are great, but without that kind of, I guess, life experience and that creativity, you can't go further. And finally, we'll meet McKay. I'm going to school for studying mechanical engineering. 
and I, that's one of the uh, CAD design is one of the required classes for that. So we've just been learning how to design lots of different things, like we worked on designing robot arms. From McKay, I received a design call, Waterfall. So I asked him about the inspiration or the idea behind it. Um, I was just experimenting with the program, experimenting with the different features, and I just had an idea of how I could do that. And so I kept experimenting with different buttons that I could do, just different ways to make that shape. One of the most aesthetically interesting part of his design, I thought, was the way he managed to stack up a series of marble along the swirly spine of his waterfall design. I asked him how he did that. Uh, the center swirly part, that was actually really easy. That was just the helix from a rectangular sketch. But the, I think the circles are probably the hardest, just to get them lined up with that edge and to make them follow that curve. What I did was I created one sphere at the bottom corner of it, and then I just clicked Pattern Along Curve, and it patterned them along there. For the design work in this class, Ellen, Elizabeth, and McKay all use Solid Edge with synchronous technology. I asked McKay about his impression of the software. Um, before I used Solid Edge with the synchronous technology, I never really realized like, how much you could actually do with it. And after using the synchronous technology, I realized that you can virtually make anything with it. And if you, you just have to explore the features, and the possibilities are pretty much endless. About his post-graduation plan, this is what McKay has to say. Um, I think I would like to design a product and maybe even start my own company eventually. I would also like to work with cars or planes or something with vehicles. As his parting words, McKay shared this piece of advice with me about his design philosophy. The, there's always many different ways to accomplish the same, the same thing, but usually this, there's the simplest way is the best way to do it. That's what I've always found when I'm designing things, is that there's always a really simple way that works better than the more complex ways to do things. I can honestly say that these three students teach me something about design that sometimes get lost in the shuffle of life. The importance of creativity, to challenge tradition, to once in a while break the rules of aesthetics to see where it might take you. So until next time, this is Kenneth Wong, with special thanks to Elizabeth, Ellen, and McKay, and their professor, John DeVitri, for Desktop Engineering Magazine.